for each question, we have to choose at least one, at most one, or exactly one. So T maps onto RM if Tx equals B has how many solutions? At least one, yeah. So if you can create any B you want, right, that means that you map onto RM, similar to the idea of spanning, right? It's you're, you're spanning a whole space RM. So this has to be at least one. As long as there's a solution, as long as you can create anything in RM, then you're mapping onto RM. All right, for T to be one to one, B has to have how many, so Tx equals B has to have how many solutions? At most one, yeah. Right, because the definition of one to one that you know from say college algebra is that each x has to come from one, I'm sorry, each y has to come from one x. If you have two x's that go to the same y, it doesn't pass the horizontal line test, right? So you can have at most one output being the solution for each input. And to be both one to one and on two, exactly one. At least one and at most one means exactly one. All right, good. So remember, one point for each question right, one point for your question that you wrote, and one point for notes that you took. Maximum of four recorded on your folder. Put your completed quizzes in the folder. Okay, so we're going to look at one-to-one -one and on-to. We're going to talk about the standard matrix of a linear transformation, linear transformation being a topic that we talked about last class. And I forgot we were supposed to start with finishing the activities from last class. So let's jump back to wherever you left off in class 10. I think most of you were like through mo like, at like number three or four, right? Yeah. All right. So jump wherever you left off there. We're going to spend half an hour or so on those activities, maybe less if people finish it quicker, and then we'll do the lecture for class 11. Okay, so we're going to continue talking about um, linear transformations in this class. We're going to talk about one-to-one -one and onto. We're going to talk about how to find the standard matrix of a linear transformation and how to use its columns to determine if the mapping is one-to-one -one and onto. So we're going to start by going back to a college algebra class. And this is, we're going to use these basic, basic functions to talk about what one-to-one -one and onto is. So let's um, quickly write down a definition of one-to-one -one that you might remember. Right? So one-to-one -one for just a function, it was each y can come from only one x. Right, that's why the horizontal line test um, can tell you if a function is one to one, right? Because if there are two, if there's a y value that comes from two different x's, it's not one to one. So instead of x and y, I'm going to use the term input and output so that we can be a little more general um, when we're not going just from r to r. Okay, so one to one means that each output. comes from exactly one input. So there's exactly one pre-image that creates each image. Right? So just to throw in some more vocab, output, you could also say image. Input, you could also call pre-image. So that's a concept you studied in a, in a previous course, only in the xy plane, but we can expand it to um, be more generic. All right, but onto, mapping onto a space, um, let's say onto the codomain. So you know where the outputs live, right? Like when we're going from R to R, for example, the X, Y plane, you put in X's, you get out Y's, right? So the outputs live in the real numbers. Your outputs are just real numbers um, in the easiest case. But the question, if you map onto the codomain, 
that means you can create every possible output along the y-axis, every real number. So this is when the range equals the whole codomain. It's similar to the concept of spanning. Can you span the entire y-axis, the entire real line from your outputs? Let me write that. Or outputs span the codomain. You can create the whole codomain as, from outputs of your transformation or function. So let's see if we can apply those definitions to some examples. So if f of x equals 3x minus 4, that's a line, right? It looks something like that. For every y, does it come from exactly 1x? Yeah, because when you do the horizontal line test, you never have you never hit a, a place where there are two y's that come from two different x's. So this is one to one. Okay. Is every y represented? Is every y value represented as an output of this function? Yeah, so the range of that thing is negative infinity to positive infinity, which is the entire codomain, the real numbers. So f, this notation, f goes from r to r. That means that the domain is the reals and the codomain is the reals. Inputs are real numbers and outputs are real numbers. So we know the codomain is the reals. The range is all the reals. So this is also onto. And we say it maps onto the codomain, maps onto the reals. But sometimes um, for shorthand, we just say this function is onto. But what we mean is it maps onto the reals, create all the reals. All right, let's think about x squared. Quick graph. Is that one to one? Doesn't pass the horizontal line test. There are y values that can be created by two different inputs, two different x values, right? So let's say like two and negative two, right? The output of 4 can be created by two different inputs, 2 and negative 2. So this is not 1 to 1. Okay. On to. Okay. Can, we, can you get every possible real number as an output of the function x squared? Yeah, you can't get any negatives when you, so the range of this thing is just 0 to infinity. It's not all the reals. So this is also not on to. not one to one and not onto. All right, x cubed minus x squared. I, I put a little picture of it up here because it didn't seem reasonable to expect you to know what that looked like. So make it a little bigger. Does it pass the horizontal line test? No, so it's not one to one. Um, is the range all of the real numbers? Yeah, the, the range equals the codomain, so this is onto, but it's not one to one. So this is not one to one, but is onto. All right, and then f of x equals e to the x. Draw a quick picture of that. Looks like this. That one you should know off the top of your head. Does it pass the horizontal line test? Yeah, each output y comes from only one x, so it is one to one. Can you get as outputs of this function every real number? No, so it's not onto. So you see you can get any combination. It can be both one to one and onto, it can be neither, it can be one or the other. All right, so those are the concepts of one-to-one -one and onto using functions that we already are very familiar with and can think about. Um, we're going to move into a linear transformation and try to think about whether this thing is one-to-one -one 
or and or onto. But first, we have to um, come up with the standard matrix. So they gave me T goes from R2 to R3. That means my inputs are from R2, or my pre-images are from R2. They're vectors with two entries. And my outputs are in R3, vectors with three entries. So you take input two-dimensional things, and they output three-dimensional things. All right, so this tells me that T of 1, 0 is 2, 6, 3, and T of 0, 1 is 4, 0, 0. So I'm looking for a standard matrix A. Multiplication by that matrix gives me these pieces of information. So T of x equals AX is how we want to define this thing. So I know that T of 1, 0 is some matrix A times 1, 0. And that should give me the matrix, the, the vector 2, 6, 3. Okay. That's the information that I was given. And I know that T of 0, 1, if I want to do that as a matrix A times 0, 1, I need that to come out to 4, 0, 0. So I have to figure out a matrix A that will do this. So um, what are the dimensions of a 1, 0 vector? Close. 2 by 1? Yeah. All right, so this is a 2 by 1. I'm going to multiply A by a 2 by 1, which means what, a, what is the second dimension of A have to be? 2. So it's something by 2, right? This output vector is 3 by 1. Right? So my inner dimensions match. So that means I can multiply A times 1, 0. And the outer dimensions are supposed to give you the answer, right? So what does this missing dimension on A have to be? 3. So A is, I'm trying to build a 3 by 2 matrix, so that when I multiply it by 1, 0, I get 2, 6, 3. And when I multiply it by 0, 1, I get 4, 0, 0. All right, so a 3 by 2. So let's just sort of three rows, two columns, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. There's a 3 by 2 matrix. All right, so the way we build the two, the way I'm going to get the two is I would take these first two open circles here, right, the top row, rotate it, put on top of the one zero. So what, in order to make the two, what has to go in this upper left circle? A two, yeah, because then I would have two times the one to get my two, and it doesn't matter what I put in this second circle because it's going to get multiplied by 0 and not do anything. So this has to be a 2. The only way I can get the 2 over here. All right, I'm going to leave the second one blank because it doesn't matter what it is right now because it's going to get multiplied by 0. All right, let's look at my next row, the middle row of the blank A matrix. If you pick that up and turn it and rotate it 90 degrees, put it on top of the 1, 0, what has to go in that second entry of the first column to make a 6? Six? 6, so that I have 6 times 1. And it doesn't matter what I put in the second entry of the second column because it's going to get multiplied by 0 and added. So then what has to go in this last one? 3. Okay. So 2, 6, 3. It goes there. So that, this first piece of information told me the first column of my matrix. The second piece of information is what's going to tell me my next piece of information. So now I've got, I now have 2, 6, 3. I know that's my first column, and I have three unknowns here. And I know when I multiply by 0, 1, I have to get 4, 0, 0. So now we're going to do the same sort of thing, imagining doing the multiplication. So I'm going to take that first row, rotate it. The 2 is on top of the 0, and I get 2 times 0 is 0. And then I have this blank is going to be on top of the 1. 
so that I multiply them, what should it be? Four. Yep. So then I have two times zero plus four times one. That gives me the four here. All right. Now I'm going to have six times zero plus something times one, and I want to get zero. Zero. And three times zero plus something times one, I want to get zero. Zero. So it turns out my, my matrix A, my standard matrix A, is 263400. So it's 263400. Okay, did 263 and 400 look familiar? Where did they where did we see them in the original problem? They were the vectors that were given, the output vectors that were given. That's because I gave you, these are um, columns of the identity matrix, 1, 0, and 0, 1. If my inputs were from R3, I would have had to give you three um, pieces of information, each column of the identity matrix in a 3 by 3 matrix. So it would have been 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. If you know what a linear transformation does to the columns of the identity matrix, you can write the standard matrix. That's all you need to be able to do it. Yeah, you don't have to write down any of the stuff we did. Sure. Yeah. You, you actually don't. You could have a little trick. Um, because uh, because transform this is a linear transformation. Like let's say I gave you um, t of two three, right? And I told you that the that gave you a vector of um, I don't know. I'm just gonna make this up. Seven eight nine, right? Linear transformations are special because of that adding and multiplying thing, right? Like t of a plus b is the same thing as of t of a plus t of b. And then you have coefficients can be pulled out to like t of c times the vector u is c times t of u. That was the definition of a linear transformation. So I can take this information and pull out 1, 0, and 0, 1, figure out what t of 1, 0, and 0, 1 is. Because I could say, well, this is, um, I could break it into t of 2, 3. That's equal to t of 2, 0 plus t of 0, 3, and then pull out the coefficients, right? So this is 2 times t of 1, 0, plus 3 times t of 0, 1, and I know that has to give me 7, 8, 9. Um, and I would have had to give you more than one piece of information here. Right, so um, like if you had another t of one five gives you something else, right? Then you can figure out what t of one zero and t of zero one are with a little arithmetic, or you can do it the way we just did it. All right, so let's see. Our standard matrix that we just came up with was two six three four zero zero. Two six three four zero zero. Okay, so we now know how to find a standard matrix of a linear transformation, and I want to now talk about whether this linear transformation is one to one and onto. So I'm going to take those concepts that we just talked about from R to R, and think about them now from R two to R three. Right. So this is a linear transformation. The inputs are in R two, the outputs are in R three. So I want to know, is this thing one-to-one -one and onto? So one-to-one, -one, every output has to have come from exactly one input. There has to be one input vector to create each possible output vector. So let's just take a random output vector, b1, b2, b3. Okay. So if I have 2, 6, 3, four zero zero and I want to get some output vector right this is what I would set up yeah 
augmenting it with a generic output vector from R3. Yep. And when I solve this thing, it's going to give me a vector in R2, right? Um, that would that would give me that output. Hopefully, exactly one vector in R2. If there were more than one vector in R2, what would be true about this system? It would have to have a free variable. So we're looking for this to not have a free variable. So let's see. If I row reduce this, I get 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. And I'm going to get some stuff over here. Stuff with B1, B2, and B3 in it. And I don't care what it is. Okay. Are there any free variables here? No, because I have a pivot in each column, right? So my x1, this is my x1 column, my x2 column. This says x1 equals some stuff, x2 equals some stuff. And so there are no free variables. There is exactly one solution, no matter what b1, b2, b3 I choose. So this is one to one exactly one input creates any b1, b2, b3, right? So one to one. Um, yes. Yeah. So it's possible, according to what I just wrote up here, it's possible that the system could be inconsistent, right? Because I do not have a pivot in every row, right? This could say zero equals something non-zero, which is impossible, right? So the fact that there isn't always a solution, right? One-to-one -one said, for one-to-one, -one, it's not exactly one. What was it? It was at, yeah, it could be one or zero. Um, it was at most one. The at most one solution gives you one to one. On to means there has to be at least one solution, right? So looking at what I did here, is there always a solution no matter what B1, B2, B3 I pick? No, right? It's possible that this could come out as inconsistent, right? So this is not on to creates any, um, I should be a little bit more careful with how I say that. Exactly one input creates any B1, B2, B3 in the range. Any output that, that is an output of the function can only be created by one input. But we can't, um, since the system is possibly inconsistent, sometimes inconsistent. This is not onto. You can't get any B1, B2, B3 as an output to this function. Answering this question, is it one-to-one, -one, is it onto, you can do in a really rote way. Like we have just really kind of thought this through, right? But it really comes down to pivots. So a pivot in every row tells you whether or not it's onto. A pivot in every column tells you whether or not it is one to one. Pivot in every column, one to one. Pivot in every row, onto. And that is the summary on the next page. Okay. Summary for a, a matrix A. Pivot in every row of A can tell you a, a number of things, right? If there's a pivot in every row of a matrix, that tells you that the linear transformation AX is onto. It tells you that the columns of A span the space RM. It tells you that the matrix equation AX equals B has a solution for all possible Bs. And it tells you that every vector B in RM can be expressed as a linear combination of the columns of A. So if I ask you any of those questions, it, all you have to do is look at, is there a pivot in every row? So they all mean the same thing. 
and then pivot in every column of A, that answers several different questions also. If there's a pivot in every column, it tells you that the linear transformation A times X is one to one. It tells you that the columns of A are linearly independent, which we talked about last class. It tells you that when the matrix AX equals B has a solution, it is unique. That's what it means. That's the definition of one to one. And it tells you that the matrix equation AX equals zero has only the trivial solution. That was the definition of linearly independent. So this is basically a summary of chapter one, right? This is how to answer every question in chapter one. Almost every question. All right, so let's do one more together where we use that information. So I have a linear transformation, R5 to R3. My inputs are vectors with five entries. My outputs are vectors with three entries. And I defined it in this weird way. I just said, take your input with five entries. And to create your output with three entries, your first entry is x3 minus x4. Your second entry is 6 times x5. And your third entry is always 0. All right, so if I want to come up with the standard matrix, right, I, the directions are at the very beginning here. For each, find the standard matrix A and determine if it's one to one or onto. All right, so I want to find the standard matrix A. All I need to know is what happens to the columns of the identity matrix in R5, right? The inputs from R5. So the columns of the identity matrix from R5, that would be T of, it's called E1, the first column of the identity matrix. So that would be T of one, zero, 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 zero. So just follow this rule. Okay? What happens to this vector? So I'm going to say, well, x3 minus x4, that would be 0 minus 0, which is 0. 6 times x5, that's 6 times 0, which is 0. And the last entry is always 0. So that's my the first column of my standard matrix. Then I have to know what happens to the second column of the identity matrix. So this is going to be T of 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. You just keep moving the 1 down through your list of zeros. OK, so it's going to be a vector in R3. x3 minus x4 is 0. 6 times x5 is 0. Last entry is always 0. So there's T of E2. I'm going to have to do this five times. right? So T of E2. This is T of 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. Yes, yeah, 3. Thank you. OK, x3 minus x4, what is that? 1. Yep, x3 is 1 minus x4, which is 0, so I have 1. 6 times x5 is 0. Third entry is always 0. T of e4. I'm just going to tell you what the last two are is negative 1, 0, 0. And T of E5 is 0, 6, 0. I'm using round brackets instead of square brackets because I'm lazy. Don't let it confuse you. So my standard matrix A is just a matrix that has these columns. So it's going to be 0, 0, 0 is my first column. Then T of E2 is also 0, 0, 0. That's my second column. Then 1, 0, 0, negative 1, 0, 0, and 0, 6, 0. All right, this is already in echelon form. It's not completely row reduced, but it's it's in echelon form. You can tell where the pivots are, right? So where are the pivots in this thing? This one and this six are pivots, right? 
So do I have a pivot in every column? No. So what do pivots in columns tell us? One to one, right? So this thing is not one to one. Is there a pivot in every row? Nope. So it is also not on to. a lot. You can go ahead and start the group activities.